Hey everyone, my name's Angus, and welcome to the very first video devlog for Niravasi. In this video, I'll be going over all the new developments that have happened in March of 2021. But before we go any further, let's first talk about Niravasi's Kickstarter campaign. So it's been two months since I first launched Niravasi's Kickstarter campaign back in January, and unfortunately, the game did not reach its funding of £3,000. You will now no longer be able to make donations to the game's Kickstarter page, and everyone that's backed the project so far will have their pledges refunded. But at the end of the day, I'm still incredibly thankful for how far the Kickstarter campaign had even gotten, as well as those who supported the project along the way. In those two months, Niravasi managed to reach over £1,200 in funding, as well as generally receiving a lot of really good feedback. Heck, the demo build even got a bunch of reviews done for it by both indie journalist sites and YouTubers. As I stated before in the Kickstarter's campaign page, the game was always going to be developed, and this campaign was more of a way to generate user interest, as well as be used for additional funding purchases like equipment and marketing costs. I'll just have to find other ways to make ends meet, so don't worry, this won't affect the quality of the main product's release. Additionally, I will still be providing the backer benefits to those that pledged to the project. They held Niravasi in a high enough regard that it was worth making a pledge, so I think it's only fair that they get a little special treatment. But enough about the Kickstarter, let's focus on the game itself, which is what the rest of you are waiting for. Let's now focus on the work that's been done for Niravasi's third level, Ishani Bazaar. In my previous written devlogs, I explained that the city of Niravasi itself would be unlike anything players will have seen at that point. While not explicitly mentioned in-game, the architecture and design of the previous two levels were made to lure the player into a full sense of understanding. When players see ancient architecture in other games, they're quick to assume that the rest of the game's setting will look like that for the remainder of the experience. Most cities in reality, though, are a mishmash of old and modern buildings, and I wanted to use that fact to throw players out of their comfort zone when entering the city's borders for the first time. Also, as Niravasi is a horror experience, the use of lighting is incredibly important to that genre. I didn't want players fumbling around the dark for the whole game, so a setting like Niravasi's allows me to create maps and set pieces that don't require the use of the flashlight, as well as theorycraft new ways into scaring the player. However, you'll soon find that you are not alone in Niravasi. Aside from Clovis, your trusted friend, you'll have your first meeting with Aeon here. From this point on, you'll have many encounters with this machine and its robotic proxies. While in Niravasi, you'll not only have to worry about proxies and sentries, like the ones that you find in the previous levels, but also a brand new enemy type in the form of Kali, the Harvester. Seen throughout the game's promotional art, Kali is a machine built by Aeon to reclaim and harvest any humans that land in Niravasi. But since you're not human, Aeon has no need of you and will send the Harvester to eliminate you instead. It's at this point in the game that a new mechanic will be introduced in the form of Kali detection. Some enemies and interactable events in Niravasi from the third level onwards will trigger Aeon to send Kali to your location, which will result in a 30 second timer appearing above your head. When those 30 seconds are up, Kali will appear in whatever location you're in and attempt to eliminate you. What's worse is that not only does the Harvester move more erratically than other enemies you can find in the game, but Kali will not stop chasing you even if you go to a different map. The only way to evade it is to enter what's called a protection shelter. Using one of these devices will end the timer if it hasn't already and cause Kali to lose track of you, which will essentially put you back into a safe zone again. The Kali detection mechanic is the reason why the enemies in the previous levels you find aren't as difficult to manage as in other horror games. Both the proxies and sentries complement the Kali mechanic, which will lead to some hard situations as the games go along. But the Harvester certainly won't be the last new enemy type you'll find in the game, so be sure to keep a lookout for what's in store next. There's still a lot that needs to be done for Ashani Bazaar, but I'm really excited to see how work on it develops as the next few months pass. It's definitely going to be the most ambitious area of the game and will require a lot of work to complete, but I'm confident that when it's finished, Ashani Bazaar will be an experience unlike anything you've seen in other RPG Maker horror games. With that out of the way, let's instead draw our attention to some new changes that have been made on the base level. In the Kickstarter demo builds of Niravasi, players were able to have their flashlights on for as long as they liked without any negative consequences. I initially chose it to work this way so that players would have a consistent source of light while traversing through some of the game's darker areas, as well as introduce some smaller scares to unnerve the player. 
However, as people played through the demo, I found that it made players a little too comfortable for my liking. They could just walk through the entire game with their flashlight on without having to worry about a thing. To remedy this, I've introduced a new flashlight draining mechanic that players will have to be aware of from this point onwards. As players navigate through Niravasi's decrepit halls, the charge on their flashlights will slowly drain away before it reaches zero charge. When that happens, the flashlight will deactivate and you'll be stuck in darkness once more. Don't worry though, as it takes a while for your flashlight to fully drain, and you'll also be able to use an SV terminal to fully restore it as you please. You may have also noticed in those clips that Mora now has a health bar. This ties directly to a new health base system that I've added in the game. In the Kickstarter builds for the demo, all the enemies that you found would have been able to instantly kill you on contact. While initially this was done to add a sense of tension and urgency for all the machines in Niravasi, a lot of people came back to me and felt that this mechanic was far too punishing. Following your feedback, I've gone ahead and redesigned how interactions between you and the proxies work entirely. Instead of booting the player instantly back to the main menu on contact, proxies will now deal a chunk of damage to Mora's health bar, depending on what their type is. Mora has 9 lives in total, and when that number goes down to zero, you'll have an all express trip back to the main menu. Do keep in mind however that there will still be enemies in the game that will instantly kill you on contact, such as the sentries and Kali the harvester like I mentioned before. The latter's for obvious reasons because that ties directly to its mechanic, and the former was, well, it, I mean it was kind of your fault that you got caught by a sentry of all things. Oh, and I guess trains will also kill you because in the end nothing can stop a train. I understand these mechanics may come across as being a bit jarring for those of you that have played the Kickstarter demo, but my hope with this is that as time goes along, they'll start to feel more like a natural evolution of the experience for Niravasi as a whole. But for any future demo releases, please please let me know if there's anything you would like adjusted or changed about them. Finally, let's talk about some quality of life changes that have been made to the game since the Kickstarter demo's build. There's a lot more changes that I may have left out, but here's some of the ones that I can think of on the top of my head. First of all, to compensate the new flashlight charge system, all the interior doors and SV terminals within Niravasi will now be lit up. Not only will this help the player navigate through darker spaces when their flashlight's been deactivated, but it's also a good indicator to the player as for where they need to go whenever they're inside a building and the doors are positioned to either the left or right side of a map. Second, new sources of light have been included or improved in certain map instances to better light the way for players, as well as create a more tense atmosphere. Next, all interior maps inside Niravasi have had their geometry adjusted to better improve visibility when walking around certain areas. This included passageways that led southbound and in some areas where there are higher levels of elevation. Furthermore, new tiles have been added to certain maps to better improve the visual design of the interior buildings, such as the temples within Old Hanir. By popular request, all the sound effects in Niravasi have been tuned down significantly so as to not completely drown out both the music and the hearing of the player. This will be consistently worked on as the development of the game continues, so please give me feedback if it gets a bit too loud or too quiet in some areas. Finally, many lines of dialogue have been either optimised or adjusted to better improve the flow in the game. There's obviously going to be longer periods of chatter in some scenes, but I'm hoping this will remedy the dialogue from being a bit too overbearing at times. Again, if you have any feedback about this, please let me know. That's all for now for this March 2021 video devlog for Niravasi. It's been an absolute pleasure sharing the work I've done in this game with all of you, and I hope to work on these video devlogs more as time goes on. The written devlogs will still be happening every Tuesday and can be found on these digital platforms here. Also, feel free to let me know if you have any questions, comments or feedback on these devlogs or Niravasi in general. With that said, thank you all so very much for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye.